So I need this pacing group to help Anna Dorofsky get a new fastest time up to his tip. I think her previous record was 35 minutes 48 seconds and on this particular occasion she managed to get it down to 35 minutes and 3 seconds. The cool thing about it is that she held the same wattage. So that goes to show that when you ride in a group up to his tip definitely makes a difference. So you got someone to pace you, definitely helps. And on this particular ride, we didn't ride too aggressively. We weren't cutting the corners much. We were staying pretty much in the one lane. So she could have gone even faster had she cut the corners. So here we've got uh, David Banana on my wheel. Um, I think he's David Banana of Eagle Power on YouTube, not too sure. Um, and there we've got Sean Remy, Carl Doping. He's the guy with the black kit, vegan cyclist kit, uh, and all the it's got a lot of ink there. And behind David, we've got uh, Paul Smith, also from South Africa. He's a good guy. I think he's got a lot of potential with cycling. He used to do a lot of um, track running, a lot of short stuff on the track, middle distance. And he was pretty fast on the track. So I think he's got a lot of potential for cycling. He also likes to call the fuck up big time. And next to me, I had Jay Wattage, who was just helping me set the pace. And we also had uh, Harley on the wheel. Uh, Harley had the bamboo bike, it was quite a heavy bike, 16 kilos, 17 kilos. So he had to push an extra 30 watts. <laughs> and he was actually going um, for, he actually held a watt inch PB on Deutsche Tech. His best watts was 318 watts, but he managed to hold 320 watts and 321 watts and still whipped out his camera in the process. So he was really fired up. The energy in the bunch was good and yes I really enjoyed this ride it was a lot of um, it's a lot of fun just helping someone achieve their goals and Anna is a great cyclist um, she's probably the best vegan cyclist that I know um, there are probably better cycl vegan cyclists than her out there but uh, she's the best one that I know and her performance this year is excellent uh, the wattage that she held for this one was 4.4 watts per kilo and she needs um, 60 kilograms or 59 kilograms. So really great performance in national level stuff and she really knows how to bang it out. I apologize for the portrait image. I couldn't get the landscape image as I didn't have the mount to make a landscape from the seat post point of view. But hey, any footage is better than no footage. So what's been happening with my time up Deutsche Tech? Um, it's still 29.50, it's been like that for the last four sessions, so I've reached the plateau in my training. So that all that means is I'm going to have to change my strategy, do my training a little bit differently, and that's okay. We all reach a plateau from time to time, and it's uh, not just like that in training, it can be like that in life. So all we're going to do is change our strategy, because if we keep doing what we've always done, we're going to keep getting what we've always gotten. So there you saw Jay pointing out the dog on the raid. And that's one thing about Deutsche Tep is when you go down it, just take it very easy. Um, I've crashed twice down Deutsche Tep now. The other day it was pissing with the rain and I came down at 66 k's an hour and nearly slid straight into a minibus. I slipped for 100 meters and the road was so smooth that I hardly had any damage on my elbows or um, on my buttocks at the point of impact. It was only a little bit of bruising. So yeah, you just got to take it easy down Deutsche Tep. Eileen recently broke her collarbone. Um, she's also part of the group and a very unfortunate accident, uh, front tire blew out and just came down around the corner. Apparently there was also oil on the road. So yeah, just take it easy on the downhills. The KOMs on the downhills just aren't worth it. Everyone in this group is spinning at a high cadence. I found over the years that the optimal cadence for doing high intensity efforts is between 90 and 100 RPM. Some people may prefer riding a slightly higher cadence or a slightly lower cadence, but my best performance up Deutsche Tep was at an RPM of 94. So you may be wondering, where is Anna in this group? Well, she's the one just behind Sean there. She's wearing the orange kit with the Lumo yellow helmet. So she's very noticeable. <laughs> what is it that makes Anna able to perform better than the other vegan girls? Is it their genetics or is there a mindset? What is it? I'd say definitely her mindset. Um, she's really focused on what she wants to achieve and she's relentless in the pursuit of that goal. 
and therefore is able and willing to suffer more than the other girls are. So I think that's what ultimately makes the difference. She's got that hardcore mindset, that mentality of just never giving up, never quitting. And I've seen her training on Strava. She really goes deep in the intervals and she gives it everything she's got. So Anna is really a tough chick. I believe Anna could have gone even deeper in this effort had she not worn her heart rate monitor because the moment she saw that her heart rate went over 190 beats per minute average for the time trial, she started freaking out a little bit and that, caught, that probably caused her to stop breathing a little bit more erratically. So if you don't have that mental limiting factor, then you can go even deeper. So that's why I really recommend pacing according to wattage rather than to heart rate because you don't want that mental block of, oh my heart rate's so high and then you just sort of freak out and you bring it back down when you can actually go deeper and your heart rate will obviously go up but that's okay it doesn't matter how high your heart rate is as long as you can hold the pace for nanny bra then your body isn't going to shut down i've really been enjoying this year's festival yes there's less crew here than years before but there are some advantages to having less crew there's less names to remember and it's safer for everyone else because if you have large groups of people then obviously the risk of crashing is higher too I did the best that I could for this time trial to push Anna to the limit. I started the first 10 minutes at 290 watts, the next 10 minutes I went to 300 watts, and then past the halfway mark I bumped it up even more to 310 watts, and at that point Anna was uh, starting to lose the wheel a bit. I think it was more of a mental thing with the heart rate going over 190 beats per minute, and if she didn't have that limiting factor, she would have held it all the way to the end. I remember back in the day, I was 18 years old, won the Junior National Time Trial Championship and my average heart rate was 198 beats per minute. My max heart rate is 200 beats per minute and that was on a 30k time trial. So it's about uh, 40, 40 minutes of time trialing and now if I have to do a time trial of the same length, my average heart rate would be around 180 beats per minute. So 99% uh, of max versus 90% of max quite a change over the years but uh, if I'm feeling really fresh then I can probably crank it up to 190. Either way I don't care what my heart rate is as long as I'm reaching my wattage target that's what matters. It's the power that you put out not your heart rate. Your heart rate is merely a response to the intensity and not the intensity itself. I really love the scenery here on Doyce Tech. Beautiful green trees, and the roads are very nice to ride, smooth roads. They've been smoothed out over the years by all the buses and cars traveling up and down. And most days it's uh, actually raining up here in June. So probably not the best time to be doing those step. But, you know, we make the best of what we have and we enjoy it either way. It's been interesting to see what gear ratios the people have been riding at this year's festival. The most common one that I've seen is a compact crank on the front and 40% uh, at the back, 40-11, uh, usually 11 speed per set. And I think this is the best for adventure riding, just going up the really steep grades. You get the best of both worlds, you can ride really fast on the flats and you can climb like a beast. So you can see the guys getting out the saddle a bit. And I really recommend this for all your intervals. Get out the saddle frequently so you can work a different set of muscles. Uh, even though climbing in the saddle is the most effective way to climb, it does fatigue your muscles and you will notice uh, a drop in your power for sure. So get out the saddle frequently and especially on the steeper gradients, you'll definitely notice the difference. Is it possible to get the KOM for this climb? I see Peter Puli is back on top, 25 minutes, 47 seconds, and I worked out the wattage per kilo that he held for that effort is around 5.7 watts per kilo. So according to Anton Bayer, the guy who analyzes the power files of the top guys in the world, he says that you can hold about 5.8 watts per kilo at the end of a stage for 30 minutes. That's about the natural limit. So I believe it is possible to get the KOM from this climb, but it's going to take a lot of training stress, a lot of overload, and you just have to push yourself to the absolute limit. Um, my best time for this climb is 28 minutes 20 seconds. And for that effort, I did around 5.3 watts per kilo. You may be wondering what my best performance is of the past. My best 30 minutes has been 5.5 watts per kilo. 
at the time I did a lot of racing so I had the motivation to get it done. I'm really impressed by what Anna has done this year. Last year she beat previous time and did just under 37 minutes and she's really improved her time a lot. I placed her today, um, I started this video a week ago by the way, I placed her today and she did 34 minutes and 40 seconds so she's pushed her time even more. So 23 seconds faster than in this video. So it's really incredible what she's done and I've got huge respect for her. Despite all the crazy rumours that you've heard on the internet about this festival and about people attending this festival, about Harley and everyone else, this festival is really just about everyone getting together, like-minded people and just having a great time, just celebrating being alive, you know, just getting on your bike, pushing yourself to the limit, riding with other people, putting in epic rides, 200Ks, 300Ks, 500Ks. And it's, it's beautiful, you know, it's just a, it's a little paradise that we've created. I really recommend this festival to anyone who loves their cycling, loves eating great vegan food, high fruit diet, and anyone who wants to just improve themselves, become a better version of themselves, and learn some new things. Everyone has something to offer at this festival. Everyone's got different life experiences and it's awesome talking to people all around the globe from different countries. It just uh, opens your eyes in many ways. Anna has done a great job improving the time from last year to this year. A massive 2 minutes and 20 seconds difference, just over 2 minutes 20 seconds. And she really has the potential to be a world class athlete and do great on the international scene. I uh, can't see why not. She's done quite a fair amount of racing back in the US, been racing as a Cat 3 rider and working her way up to Cat 2. And often the Cat 2 riders uh, race with the Cat 1 riders, which is the professional rank in the US. So a bright future for Anna indeed. I've spoken to Anna about her ambitions for cycling and she's told me she really wants to be a pro rider. And I really hope she achieves her dream and gets some great results in the future. So that's it from me for the commentary for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it so far and enjoy watching to the end with some good music and you're going to see Anna in the picture where she gives it everything that she's got towards the end. Ciao for now. Answer the question.